get promos and discounts from Filipino startups. Check out our partners at the description. James Miles is co-founder and COO at Talent Hero. Hello, James. Welcome to Startup Podcast. PH, we're very happy to have you. How are you? Yes, very good. Thanks for having me today. Uh, to, uh, to everyone that's listening. Um, I'm based in Singapore at the moment, but I'm frequently in the Philippines and, uh, and know it very well. So, uh, so yeah, good to meet everybody. Yeah, so James is one of our guests here who's not really Filipino, but is Pusong Pinoy or like has a heart for, for, for the Filipinos, especially building a startup in the Philippines. So um, let me ask you the first question, James. So what is, what is Talent Hero? Yes, um, thank you for that. So, so Talent Hero is Asia's first fully agile and specialist offshoring and outsourcing business that, that really leads with a talent first motto. Um, so I think you'll be aware in the Philippines, the market has always seen a big mix of traditional BPOs. Um, there's also been digital EOR aggregators. Um, and all of those have been great at um, supporting companies when it comes to um, generalist tech support or customer support. But where Talent Hero operates is somewhere in the middle. We prioritize the talent first, allowing us to help international companies uh, build out even their most niche talent requirements offshore in the Philippines. Um, and look, what, what makes us unique is that evolution that we've had from starting out as the fastest growing recruitment company in the Philippines to now one of the most exciting tech-driven offshoring businesses where we hire, we house, we equip, we pay um, our clients' teams with a click of a button so they can plug and play anywhere, anytime. Yeah, and since we talk about talent, before we go further into the startup, I mean, before we go into, into the product, into the solution, in, and maybe also into the problem that you're solving, I just want to ask, why the Philippines? I mean, I mean, what's, I mean, are there talents in the Philippines? What's, how, how is the talent based in the Philippines? So why did you choose to, um, to do this in the Philippines especially? Well, well, the Philippines is, is a, it's a unicorn in certain aspects because the Philippines has an extremely high level of English communication skills mixed with a, a high working ethic as, as well as skill sets. Um, so that provides us with a great opportunity to, to utilize that talent, particularly for international customers where appetite is bigger for scale, such, a, uh, such as in the US, in the UK, in Australia. Um, Plus, what we've seen over the years is that the Philippines has made it its priority to export its best talent. But I think these days, what we want to see is how we can utilize the best talent and keep it within the Philippines uh, moving forward. Yeah, so um, how was the experience? I mean, you're not born in the Philippines, you're based in Singapore right now. So how was, it, how was the, the initial experience working with Filipinos, working with the Filipino talents? How was it? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's great. I, I've been traveling and building businesses in the Philippines since 2006. Um, so I, I, oh. I have a, a very big heart for, for the Philippines. Um, I, I started off, I always used to travel there for business. Um, and I think the first thing that I ever came into um, contact with was, uh, was CSIG. And that's where, <laughs> that's where my heart melted with, uh, with the Philippines. <laughs> The love, the love for pork, because I'm from the UK originally, and I think the UK and the Philippines, we both have a love for pork products, whether it's fried, whether it's baked, whether it's cooked. So uh, that that's what I enjoyed. And, and working with the people, Filipinos have a have a real um, fun culture. They work hard, they play hard, and they don't take themselves too seriously. Again, quite similar to to UK. Um, culture so um so yeah that that's what i enjoy about working in the philippines yeah so now I'm going to the startup so what really is like the gap or the problem that's being solved by talent hero i mean you've mentioned that um you're building tech um talent hero as a as as, as building up the talent as, as growing the the best talent in the philippines and doing some offshore some 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 offshore services so can you just explain how really do you first how really do you build up the talent base and how how really do you connect the, the talents to probably um, those people who need this talent? So can you just uh, give us the picture uh, about that, about, about the problem that you're really solving? Yeah, yeah, good, good question. I, I think from, from my aspect, there's probably three 
problems that we're looking to solve. Um, the first one is access to, to niche um, talent. So in countries like the UK or US, there is huge demand for, for niche talent uh, skill sets, particularly in the tech world, you know, whether that's um, someone who has good Salesforce or ServiceNow experience or full stack development experience. Um, they are very difficult to find in those markets. And when you do find them, they have multiple other companies chasing after them um, and ultimately carry hugely inflated salaries due to this demand. So by working with these companies and helping them to build out this niche talent in the Philippines instead offshore, um, we're providing much better access um, and global access to, to greater niche talent across the globe. We find that talent through having the best recruiters in our business. Um, they access that through their network, through um, utilizing tech platforms and tools, but ultimately it's developing our name so that um, all those candidates come to us. Um, the, the second problem that we're trying to solve is the cost of hiring as well. Um, again, in countries outside the Philippines, like uh, Singapore and Australia, the, the cost of hiring has reached such extreme heights, it's almost impossible to run profitable organizations. Um, if you look at Australia, for example, it has the highest minimum salary or one of the highest minimum salaries in the world. Um, and in Singapore, you have extremely strict visa requirements, making it expensive to bring in foreign talent. Um, so we're trying to work with those organizations to solve that challenge by providing more cost-effective talent in markets such as the Philippines, we're also opening up in Vietnam, so we're going to add that as um, an extra wing and capacity for, for our clients so that they can manage those teams in the Philippines and Vietnam like it's their own business, which will also help to reduce their overheads. Um, and then the third one, I think, is really related to the Philippines itself. And it's kind of what we said earlier. Um, we at Talent Hero have a big passion to help increase the strength and expertise of the local talent pool in the Philippines. Um, we feel that by attracting more foreign companies to invest and build offshore teams here locally, um, we're helping to upskill and retain the best talent in the Philippines, rather than what's been done in the past, which was to export that, that really good talent overseas. So, so yeah, we're really invested in that long-term lasting positive impact um, on talent creation in, in the Philippines. Uh, so, um, are the setups like really offshore? I mean, I mean, during the past four years, three years, so there's the pandemic, right? And then there's like an evolution of of we call it the future of work now. So it's like mostly remote work. So do you do you, do you adapt to these changes? Like, is it like the is the setup really like um the main company, the main the the main headquarters is maybe in um in UK or in the United States, for example, or in Australia, and then the team is in the Philippines, and they to like purely remote work is it, is it is it is that how how it works or how you how you like promote this to happen <laughs> yeah well again you know because we're such an agile business and which makes us very unique we we can do whatever the client wants we have multiple office spaces across metro manila um under mm. the talent hero under the talent hero brand but also under our sister company we remote um so we can help clients from the UK or US or overseas if they would like to build that offshore team on site. Uh, and obviously, building an offshore team on site within an office is always the best way to, to drive productivity, to drive a culture. However, there's also some clients that, that don't mind having fully remote staff. So they're, they're okay with us to hire those people and have those people work remotely from home. So really it's it's up to the client themselves what they want. Yeah. Can you mention that you're also building this in Vietnam? So I think you're doing this for like the for like Southeast Asia, right? So I'm just curious. I mean, is there a difference? I mean with like with the I mean um for example comparing Southeast Asian talents to other Asian talents. I mean, what do you think is the main difference as well? What's like the the, the the edge of the Filipino talent. <laughs> is, there, is, yeah. there, is there something like that? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, we talked about the Philippines. The Philippines definitely has um, a huge population, a well-educated population, um, extremely high levels of English communication, um, which makes it real um, 
high in demand when it comes to offshoring, when it comes to Western countries wanting to build more cost-effective teams offshore. Um, in Vietnam, what you have, you have some of the best uh, software developers or gaming developers in the world, you know, not just in Asia, but actually globally, um, but again, at a more cost-effective rate. So each market in Southeast Asia has its strengths, and it's about utilizing that um, for our clients um, to provide them with that cost-effective solution, but not reducing the levels of quality as well. Oh, so are these companies mostly like in the software development industry? Because it's true, it's true. I mean, in the Philippines, for the Filipinos, more and more, more and more young graduates, more and more um, college students are taking up like degrees related to computer science, information technology, software development, this stuff. So are, are the companies that you're like mostly um, offering these talents or offering the solution to, um, are they mostly in the software industry, in the computer um, industry so is there like a specific industry that you cater to yeah it, it's it's a bit of a mix um obviously because of our business model we are high in demand from tech startups tech startups don't uh... have much in fit they don't have much investment behind them so they're always looking for more cost effective ways to build and scale their business so we work with a lot of tech startups who want to build their uh, development teams, whether that's software development, um, you know, front end, back end, um, full stack, C++, all, all of these areas in the Philippines. But equally, we work with very large global MNCs that maybe want to build out their sales, their lead generation, their customer experience, customer success teams in the Philippines as well. So it, we actually see quite a big mix of the customers that we deal with. Yeah, and that's really nice for, uh, I mean, for, it's like us, um, giving opportunity, opportunities to the, to the Filipino people, especially those who, who, who studied and have, and, ha and have experience in, in these related fields. Um, let's now go to the solution to the product that you're, or like the service that you're offering to, to these companies, right? So I, I, I saw in your website, there are like four main, um, what they call this, like, um, services that you're offering. So maybe we can start one by one. Let's start with um, the employer of record services. So can you know about this? Can you know more specifically how you how you offer your services to 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 the companies? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Talent Heroes main product is our employer of record solutions. So that's uh, acronym is EOR. Um, so that is it is essentially where we work with a, a company overseas based outside of the Philippines, and we help them to be build their offshore team uh, in the Philippines and have those um, employees sit on our legal entities so that we can look after them, whether it's on site or, or off site remote, um, it doesn't matter. But through that um, kind of tech platform that we have through our EOR tech platform, we're able to uh, work with companies anywhere um, in the world to help them get set up in the Philippines with everything they need, such as contracts, equipment, office space, um, at a touch of a button. So that's really our our key solution. Um, from a from a technology point of view, um, what we have also is our payroll solutions technology um, that is called Talent Pay. So our through our, our technology solution in Talent Pay, our clients are able to pay their employees or contractors in a few clicks without any unnecessary fees or hassle. Um, this technology extends through our application and also our Chrome extension, which all clients can, um, can access, um, which really simplifies things for HR um, for, for the clients, particularly if they're overseas in the US. They can click on, they can see timesheets, they can see um, how long the employee worked. They can see um, even things down to when the when the candidate's um, birthday is as well, if they're planning any holiday leave or anything like that. So it's a real kind of um, you know end to end HRIS system uh, that we've created. Yeah, so this is like an end to end solution, right? Because uh, here there's also recruitment, so it's like from recruitment to to managing all the all the legalities, all the contracts, and then. And then the total, the total end-to-end goodness of of taking care of this talent. So it's it's really an end-to-end -end solution that they're offering to these companies. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I would call it like a, a turnkey solution, right? We, uh, as I said earlier, we can hire your team, we can payroll your team, we can house your team, we can equip your team, um, mm. so that so that any business can plug and play offshore in the Philippines um, very easily, whether in the US, whether in the UK, Australia, it doesn't matter. Um, so that's that's where that's how we help organizations. Yeah. So basically, if there's an organization, if there's a business that that that's looking to to get more talents and they're interested in the Filipino people, they just go to Talent Hero. So and and then Talent Hero will will do will do will do all the stuff for them. Is that is that how it works? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll do everything. And and as I said earlier, um, when we were discussing the the uniqueness that we have because we evolved from one of the fastest growing recruitment companies in the Philippines our key strength is finding that talent so you know versus oh. your traditional versus your traditional bpos who are great at surface level requirements we can really mm. help clients um with niche requirements or or anything that they need so um so that's what really separates us oh yeah yeah that's really important especially in the in the dev in the software development industry in the in the tech startup industry yeah i'm also curious have you do you can you also do this like for filipino companies i mean filipino organization looking for filipino talents <laughs> of of course yeah though we still got a significant um you know percentage of our business is still supporting uh local clients in the philippines with finding oh. that talent um absolutely uh, that that's still a very big part of our business. Oh yeah, and there, there, I know that there are a lot of Filipino tech startups looking for talent. So if if Talent Hero can like do the the recruitment and the the, the recruitment with special with special skills with with those uh, with with uh, with the niche, so I think it really fits. It really fits the needs of these startups. It's right. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're you're right. And look, that. There aren't many really strong recruitment agencies in the Philippines for finding mm. that talent. Um, but, but, you know, with our legacy and with the people that we have within our organization, um, I can uh, honestly say, and having been in the industry for over 20 years, I can absolutely say we've got the best people in our, in our organization who will find the, mm. best, the best talent for those Filipino organizations where required. Mm, yeah yeah that's nice so do you do you scout do you look for talents all over the philippines i mean are this is this is this like the like how you get the Filipino talents like in from all islands of the philippines from luzon to mindanao so do you do you scout there and how do you get this, this talents how do you find these talents yeah yeah absolutely I mean, particularly for a company that is very comfortable with 100 percent fully remote talent then we can look anywhere across the Philippines. If a, if a client would like um, their offshore team in one of our office spaces, then of course, we've got to look around the local vicinity, you know, maybe a, a, a two hour drive maximum. Um, so it decreases the, the web slightly. Um, but yeah, in order to find that talent, we do it through a few ways. Um, we obviously do it through um, our own individual networks through our, our consultants that have been in the, in, in the industry for, for many, many years. Um, we do it through advertisements. We do it through uh, using technology tools like LinkedIn to, to try and headhunt these candidates. Um, so there is a lot of way, plus marketing as well. We get a lot of inbound candidates as soon as they see um, the, the roles that we're offering. Mm, I see, I see. That's very interesting. That's very amazing. How you, I mean, um, you sharing this, um, like this information and this, and this knowledge to 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 the to our listeners. Um, for the office spaces. So you also have these office spaces where, for example, a, a, an organization who wants who wants to work with Filipino talents. Um, it's not. I mean, there's there's a fully remote work setup where in the ta- where in the 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 talents. Stay in their homes, and it's like a, a work from home setup. But there's also like a remote setup wherein these Filipinos can stay in offices in the Filipinos. So can we talk a bit more about these office spaces? Are they in in Metro Manila or 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 yeah? How 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 does it work? I mean, what are these office spaces? Sure, sure. Yeah, we we've got a got a few uh, through Talent Heroes' own office spaces. Um, we've got uh, a number of office spaces throughout uh, Makati. Um, mainly in Salcedo Village um, oh. or, um, or or across, 
And then through our sister company, uh, We Remote, which is a co-working space, um, this is, uh, they have multiple office spaces across Metro Manila, up into Ortigas, across over into BGC. Um, so depending on what the client is looking for, um, we are seeing a trend at the moment, certain US clients who have had their team fully remote for the last few years, they want to bring them back in house into an office because they feel that they're not able to develop their cultures. So we are seeing that trend of our clients wanting to, uh, to put them in office space moving forward. Oh, yeah, that's true. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice insight there. Yeah, so I think that's a nice um, telling of what Talent Hero really offers, especially for, for organizations abroad and in, in local in the Philippines who want, to, who want to utilize or who want to work with Filipino talents. Um, now let's go to some stories behind Talent Hero. So um, can you share... Um, first, what year did Talent Hero really start, and, in, and especially in the Philippines? And second, um, how was the experiences like starting it in the Philippines? How, how, was it, how was it building the startup Talent Hero in the Philippines? Yeah, so, so Talent Hero, it's an interesting story. But basically, the Talent Hero that we see today um, evolved through the amalgamation of two A-game players in the Philippines market. First was the original Talent Hero business. Um, and tech offshore uh, platform. This was originally created by an entrepreneur called Carlo Silva, um, who is the uh, the current co-founder and CEO of Shoppable, which is a yes. B2B <laughs> e-commerce business. Um, and then we combine that with um, a, a company called Lewis Glanz Consulting, which is the fastest growing recruitment company in the Philippines, um, founded by an entrepreneur called Oliver Lewis back in 2014. Um, and he is now the overall CEO of Talent Hero um, or the Talent Hero that we know today uh, at this point. So what, what we, what, that interesting story of bringing those two businesses together, um, it's allowed us to bring together the sort of best tech minds and offshoring managers from the, the Talent Hero side together with the best tech uh, talent acquisitions and recruiters in the market through Lewis Glanz Consulting, thus making um, this sort of talent hero a force for reckoning in the offshoring and end-to-end -end recruiting space. Um, so I think overall, you know, Lewis Glanz was started 2014. Talent Hero was started in around 2020. Um, but now the, the, the new, I guess, phase two of Talent Hero, what we see today, what I am the COO of, um, began in 2022, 2023. Oh, so how's how's Talent Hero now? What what are some milestones maybe that you can share? How how big of the Filipino talent base are you already like um, getting? So can you just share like maybe a few uh, milestones or like achievements so far of of Talent Hero, especially in the Philippines? Yeah, we we hit uh, some records last year. Um, so Talent Hero. And brought in uh, the first time it's brought in around 10 million in USD uh, in terms of revenue. Um, we we did that in annual revenue for for FY 2023, um, and we also increased our um, offshore contractor base up to around 850, um, which is the highest it's been um, since the the creation of Talent Hero. So we've we've hit some real big landmarks. Um, and really kind of moving forward, we're expecting that to, to grow and grow. Um, our aspirations are to be uh, the Philippines' first true unicorn. Um, but I think through our expansion, um, not just in the Philippines, but into Vietnam, which will be up and running by the end of this month, um, and then into Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Cambodia, Myanmar, um, we're expecting to quadruple those numbers uh, by the end of, uh, of this year. So, so huge plans. Wow, amazing, amazing. And yeah, looking forward to, to see Talent Hero as, the, as a unicorn of, of the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, speaking of growth and like moving forward, like, so yeah, you, 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 you mentioned that there are also plans of expanding this on other Southeast Asian countries. But aside from that, like, what are the other plans, future plans for, for Talent Hero? Maybe do you have other solutions, other, other products or other ways on how to optimize the Filipino talent. So, uh, um, what are like some future tools that you're that you that you have for for a talent hero? 
Yeah. Um, look, we're, we're always going to be developing uh, on the tech side. You know, our, our tech platform um, is already um, up and running and doing a, a great job. We'll continue to invest and grow that further, you know, and, and start to kind of explore other areas. Obviously, at the moment, um, if you go onto the platform, eventually you'll be able to um, just click and plug and play in terms of selecting what office space you need, selecting what um, laptops or, or technical specifications that you need um, for, for your teams, selecting your, your payroll and um, anything related to that. But added to those areas, it's also about exploring things such, such as AI. You know, how can we utilize AI to help us um, find more talent and, and to really bring that talent onto our platform uh, in the most, uh, I guess, um, automated and fast way so that our clients can get the best in the market. So we'll, we'll, we'll certainly be exploring more into those areas. Um, and outside of that, it, it's really just going to be the global expansion. How can we look into um, also outside of Asia? What about the European market? What about LATAM? Um, how can we also utilize the talents there? Yeah, but uh, that's really nice what you've said. Uh, like if, 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 if an, uh, an organization who wants, who wants to expand their talents can just um, choose, <laughs> uh, pick and select how they really like maybe this kind of talents and then what kind of setup and then the equipment and then so it's like it's like it's like it's just like drag and drop it's just like yeah i choose this i choose this and then everything will come to me and optimize talents i mean uh the talents that i really need and the talents that maybe are like the best given the current given the current talent base for example in the philippines so i think that's also a big challenge but also i that would be really nice if yeah if there's an ai way and <laughs> an efficient and effective way on how to, how do you look for these talents? How do you filter? I mean, how do you specifically find what, what, what the company is looking for? I think that's really a challenge, but I think that's also like the exciting part of, of building this, of building talent hero. So maybe we can end with um, some, what's like, what are like the, the, the greatest, um, maybe lessons or insights or experience that you've had so far in talent hero that maybe you can share to our listeners, our listeners who are mostly um, startup founders or people in the startup ecosystem in the Philippines. So what what piece of advice or what piece of knowledge can you share with them, especially with regard to the Philippine startup ecosystem? Yeah, I, I mean, look, the, the core lesson is, of course, everyone's always trying to build the the next, you know, big tech startup, trying to build the next Google or, or whatever you're looking at. Um, you know, the technology piece is always critical and will always be critical. Um, but I think that the one key lesson or the one thing everyone always needs to look at first is the talent. Just making sure that you've got the right people um, on your team. You've got the right people who are going to take this business to the next stage that you can trust, um, that are bought into the business, that will run through walls for you. Um, so I think getting that right from day one is the critical point. After that, uh, of course, the investment in in technology and creating a, a great platform, but um, but the people, I, I would say, is is the critical element for this. Mm, yeah. All right. Thanks, James, for that advice, and thanks, James, for sharing about Talent Hero. It was a nice conversation. Hearing all these insights, hearing everything about um a lot of things about um Talent Hero. So, if our listeners want to know more about Talent Hero, maybe there are Filipino talents listening to this. To this conversation and they want to they want to they want to join like the like the base of of talent hero so how can our listeners find more information maybe you can lead them to the website or maybe to some contact emails or to social media channels if you have yeah I, I would say that the best area and where we're the most uh, active is on LinkedIn so you know best way would be to to look for me on LinkedIn you can find me at uh, at James miles m-i-l-e-s um search me on there um obviously under talent hero um and also look for uh for for our ceo as well who's um who's very active uh oliver lewis l-e-u uh, l-e-w-i-s if you look for us both on linkedin connect with us keep in touch send us a message um reach out for advice we're always open for coffee in in the salcedo village area so um yeah get in touch yeah, I put I put those uh, below and yes, um, thanks James for for this conversation and yeah, malamit salamat. Thank you. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you very much to our 34 patrons. This episode is super powered by Ask Lex PH Academy, our official e-learning partner, the certifications on Six Sigma, project management, data science, and many more. Kwan CFO, CFO services, bookkeeping in tax and payroll processing for startups and small businesses. Difficult technologies, IT solutions, specializing in software development, blockchain smart contracts, digital wallets, decentralized applications, and cybersecurity. Koala, the next evolution of digital trust, privacy-focused, seamless digital experience for sharing identity information across Web2 and Web3 ecosystems. The Buzz, Web3 microblogging app promoting freedom of speech and content ownership. Benjoy's food products, the home of premium bacon ends, Tapa, and Tocino. And Space Cebu, the biggest branch in the Philippines, global co-working space, meeting rooms, and private offices for startups, digital nomads, and freelancers. Looking for buy and sell online with Zugra to sellers. NutriCoach, the all-in-one productivity tool for dietitians and nutritionists. And Podify Team, podcast launch, production, editing, and management company helping to increase podcasters' efficiency. This episode is powered by Contact for the Ball RFID business cards, Uplift Code Sirius MD, Board Prep, Pareto Consulting, Zales, and Pocketworks. Please support the podcast through the links in the description.